Okay guys, so we're going to change our oil. If changing oil is not your thing, go check out our blog. We've got some great recipes and other things you may enjoy. But today we're going to go over changing oil. So for this oil change, I got seven quarts of oil. This is a Lincoln LS with a six liter, uh, uh, a v, V6. So seven quarts of oil is what this requires. Plus, I got a 15 inch, a 15 millimeter socket for the old drain plug. I've got this handy oil filter removal tool. I also have a new oil filter and an oil drain pan. Now, once you drain your oil in your, uh, from your car, you can simply carry this back to usually the place you bought the oil from and they'll take the oil back, the old oil, and dispose of it for you. So, really good thing and uh, save yourself some money. All out, we're about $30 here for the oil filter and the oil. If you need an oil pan, you can pick these up for about $10. If you need a 15 millimeter socket and the, the tool to remove the filter, you're out another $15, $20. But then you can change your oil every 3,000 miles, or in our case, we don't drive that much, so every year, because they say the oil doesn't live that long. So let's get into this. We'll also leave links to tools where you can get these online and filters and things of that nature. If you don't uh, want to go to the store or you're so far past on your oil change that you just have to order it in. So if you can't fit under your car, you'll have to jack it up. You can use the factory jack that came with your car. I would recommend putting jack stands underneath it to keep the car more secure. Now I jacked up both sides because I really can't fit into this car without that. Also, I use this jack, which is a 12 volt jack, comes in an emergency kit. If you're looking for that, see link down below. We did a review on this as well. So when you're placing your oil pan, move it out to the farthest edge from your oil plug, where it can still drip down, because this oil is going to originally come out with force. Then take a wrench or a socket wrench and loosen that plug. Fish taken out and you'll see a nice flow of oil. You see it almost reached the far end of our pan. Make sure your pan is wide enough to uh, accommodate that. Once the oil is drained, put your plug back in. Be sure you start it with your fingers. You don't want to cross thread your old drain plug. That would be bad. I usually tighten it with my fingers as far as I can turn it. That way, when I put my wrench back on it, it clicks. I guess it's loose enough. I need to tighten it. Don't worry, that will lubricate your wrench. While the add grease won't, or the add oil won't hurt your, your socket wrench, it will sure make a mess. So move your oil pan out of the way, unlike me, and now I have a heavily lubed socket wrench. Tighten it down, that should be good, and wipe, wipe up any excess oil. Of course, you'll want to come back and check this when you start filling up with oil to make sure none comes out. 
Now we can uh, remove our oil filter. The oil filter on this car is on the driver's side back behind the rear tire. So if you see there. And when you take this off, it should be hand tight. But if not, you have a wrench. There it goes. So, hand tight. Now this will make a heck of a mess. Make your watch all lubricated too. Should have took that off. Oh well. Long threaded. And just drop this into the pan of oil. And I would have probably, if I wasn't rushing, I would have just uh, let the oil drain then pull, uh, pull it out. Okay guys, so if you haven't made a, enough mess at this point like I did, I lubricated my watch and my wrench. So good to go, it should last a long time now. Take your oil filter out of the box, recycle, and then take some of the just take some of the old oil and wipe it around the rubber seal. This will uh, help it spin on so it gets a, a, a tighter by hand and you don't leak oil. Of course you always want to check after you run it to make sure you're not leaking oil. But uh, yeah, do that. So now we're ready to stick the oil filter back on. The oil filter should only be hand tight. I've heard of, uh, you know, there's people that say you should fill your uh, oil filter with oil before putting it in there, and then others say no. I've never filled my oil filter with oil, and I've never had a problem. I just seem to have a problem getting it on the threads. There we go. Now I just do this hand tight. Okay, once it's tightened down, you want to wipe up any excess oil on the floor so you can confirm it's not leaking. So after you get your oil filter on and you've lubricated your watch and your wrench and everything's tightened back up, you got to put oil on the thing. So for this car it is 520. And you can, you can always try to hit the hole with the oil. I'm going to use an oil funnel. We'll see if that helps uh, uh, contain some of the mess I make. If you don't have an oil uh, funnel, you can always pour in like a, a one, qu one quart oil and then cut the bottom off of it and then pour the remaining oil in through that one quart. Do that. And I still make a mess. Hey. Just a little bit. It's not even sunset the lemonade time. I know. I haven't even been drinking yet. Maybe 
So we have uh, five, five quarts in here now. We're going to take and uh, I'm going to look underneath and make sure I'm not leaking the oil. And uh, you, you may want to check, you know, in an hour or two, but come back to it just to make sure you're not leaking oil. Because oil leaks are bad and uh, blown engines are worse. So after about five quarts of oil, you should be able to analyze the oil drain plug to make sure that's not leaking. And then you should be able to see the bottom of your oil filter to make sure there's no oil running down that and dripping down. That probably won't leak unless the engine's running. So after you get that six quart of oil, which I just put in, you might think you're done. Because if you pull out the oil stick, the car is level now, I lowered the car. It says it's full. But the oil filter is not, has not been filled. And that holds about a quarter of oil right there. So you're going to have to start your engine to cycle the, the oil through the engine and fill up the oil filter. On this car, be sure to take your oil filter out of the valve cover because uh, it's directly laying on the valves and uh, probably not that great on your oil filter. Or your oil filler. So let's crank it up. So you want it to cycle through a bit, let, let it warm up a little bit. We're not, uh, no valves are rattling, so that's a good sign. That means we have oil and oil pressure. I did wipe up all the uh, remaining oil because I don't like oil smoke. If you prefer oil smoke, leave the oil on your engine. It also promotes fire. So engine made fires are not good as well, but if you like them, by all means, let's go ahead and kill it. Okay, so probably going to have to wait a little bit for the oil to settle down, but let's see what it looks like. And we are a quart low. So we'll go ahead and put the remaining oil in here. It's at the uh, very bottom of the just before add oil. Right there. Now that is all the way up to the max. So seven quarts of oil, and uh, your oil change is done. Now, how, now time for the. Now it's time to dispose of the old oil. So, the uh, old cans and jugs you, you pour the oil in here with. I'm going to pour the oil back into them so I can take them to the uh, auto parts store. Or the, uh, well, I'm using advanced auto parts, but if you're doing this online, they'll, they'll welcome you bringing back the old oil. Hopefully this was helpful for your, hey, awesome. So. Hopefully this was helpful for your next oil change experience. This is the Lincoln LS. So, seven quarts of oil, oil filter, and uh, some miscellaneous tools. Really simple. Not too shabby. And about 30 bucks mm -hmm. versus, uh, you know, I guess going to an oil place. It may be cheaper to do it through an oil place because they do buy their oil in bulk. But it's your, your, it's your choice. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, hit that like button. It's down there, looks something like this. And if you're looking for great eats, good recipes, or if you like to see how I write, 
go check out our blog at ChrisDoesWhat.com. She it's makes really stuff on there. <laughs> yummy food. I like to teach. <laughs> yes, and and right now her cake recipe is blowing up. My carrot, my carrot cake. So I had no idea that people would want to replicate that recipe, but so Easter and doing it. Yeah, I know Easter. Yeah, but I just didn't realize it would be that big. So so it's really yummy. <laughs> it is really yummy. I ate a lot of it. Yeah, we were glad we were glad when it was gone, but it is a lot lower in sugar too. It is, and it's all all uh, sugar cane sugar, and uh, that's what I use. Cream um, cheese whipped frosting with sugar cane. Yes, it can be done. You don't have to use powdered sugar. No. <laughs> so we're going to enjoy the rest of this uh, beautiful day with some nice sunset lemonades. Bar. People are having parties around here. I'm jealous. <laughs> and we're going to have a little party of our own. So y'all take care. <laughs>